Alright guys, welcome to your third Photoshop tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create a new document. Now this is a little bit more difficult than creating like a new document in Microsoft Word because you just don't press file, new, and then you're good to go. There are actually a lot of settings that you need to go through before you create a document and I'm going to be talking you guys through all of those settings right now. So go ahead and choose file, new and like I said unlike any other program where everything just pops up and it's ready to go you have to answer a bunch of questions or fill out a form before you can you know make a new document so the first one name it's easy I'll just name this you know YouTube name it whatever pretty much the name of your file so whenever you save it this is gonna be the default name that it saves under now right here your next option is your preset now this is generally uh, the main option you want to focus on first because you need to ask yourself first what are you using this for if you're just gonna make a graphic for the web or you know just something that you're gonna stick on a blog or something then just go ahead and put it at default Photoshop size and it's gonna fill out the rest of these settings for you however if you're making like a flyer for I don't know maybe you're gonna make a have a garage sale or something then you usually want to choose US paper or maybe you're working on something for a movie then you can choose film and video and then it's going to give you some more options of your video but just for the probably the rest of these tutorials and just for default you usually want to stick with default Photoshop size and then everything is filled up basically how you want it to so the next setting unless you're doing anything weird then just go ahead and stick with that the next setting is the width and height now usually whenever you're working with the web then you want to work in pixels but some people prefer inches again if you're overseas then you probably don't use inches and use metric instead but I prefer to work in pixels just cuz you know I design things for websites a lot and whenever I talk in Photoshop I don't I'm not like okay move this make a box that's two inches wide people usually say make a box that's you know 150 pixels wide so that's why I prefer to work in pixels as well but you can work in whatever matter of preference now resolution is where things get kinda tricky because it really depends on and really all of these things right here depend on what is your final image gonna be used for if you're making an image that you want to use on a website or the web in general or, or on your computer at all it needs to be 72 pixels per inch again it doesn't need to be but that's the best resolution to use um, for the web or for a computer if you're printing for example if you want to make a flyer for you know your garage sale or you know um, your new business and hang it up at the grocery store then what you want to do is you want to change this to 300 pixels per inch so it really depends on your printer but typically printers are 300 pixels per inch that's going to give you the best quality and for the web as you see if you ever choose default it puts it at 72 because that's the best for images that you just view on the computer now if you use anything less than 72 or less than 300 for printing it's gonna make the image look kinda of pixelated and bad quality and if you're saying you know what I want this image to be really good for the web so I'm gonna put this at you know 1000 pixels per inch that's gonna look crisp actually it's not gonna look crisp it's gonna look worse and the reason that you know they put 72 is because that's the standard so don't think that um, you know putting like a thousand pixels per inch is gonna give you a really high quality image it's not gonna make a difference it's just gonna use it's just gonna waste a bunch of memory on your computer so remember the rule 72 for web 300 for print now the color mode is another weird thing you know how you know when Apple and Microsoft were first making their computers they couldn't make anything compatible this is another weird thing that the compute the people who made like printers and computers this add this to annoy us RGB and CMYK are the two main color modes you're gonna use whenever you're working with images on the computer use RGB and typically printers prefer CMYK so if you ever want to print something on a piece of paper it's probably better to use CMYK color but since I'm making tutorials and using these pictures on the web you typically want to stick with RGB 90% of the time 
Now the other color modes, I might as well go over those, is grayscale pretty much means, um, you know, if you're making a black and white photo, you want it all grayscale. And the rest of these, lab color and bitmap. Lab stands for luminosity A and B channels and bitmap. Don't even worry about lab and bitmap right now because that's more advanced stuff. The really only thing you need to worry about in these tutorials, I'm going to be using RGB 100% of the time and that's what people typically use unless you're doing something really weird. So just remember that, that's the main one. We'll talk about the more advanced ones in the upcoming tutorials. Now 8-bit, don't really worry about that right now. 8-bit's fine for what we're going to be doing. The background contents are, you can make it a color which is, you know, of course, green, blue. I typically like to use white because, first of all, even if you want your background transparent, like you're making a logo that you're going to put on a website and you don't want a background that's white, I like to um, make the logo with a white background anyways because it's easier to work with and then later on when you're when you want to save the final image you can take the white away so I always choose white right here and even if you want the background to be transparent you don't want to work with a transparent background it looks weird in Photoshop so you wanna pretty much always stick with white right here and I'll show you how you can remove the background really easy later on about two clicks of the button now the other things I want to go over is the advanced section again this is obviously advanced stuff so you might as well just hide that because you don't want to accidentally click anything but the color profile don't even worry about that right now um, whenever we talk about color management I'll talk about that in the pixel x aspect ratio this is pretty much do you want your pixels to be square or not square pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time you want square pixels the only people who ever don't want square pixels is if you're working with a really um, weird video editing program some video things or some graphics that you make for videos like titles or I don't know maybe you're just making a special effect on your video they like pixels that are kind of stretched out because you know how every like TV screen in every video monitor displays your image a little bit differently but unless you really know what you're working with with video again 99 percent just leave this at square pixels I never used uh, anything but square pixels so once you're done setting everything then just go ahead and hit OK and it creates a new blank document where you can draw on, add some text, add some images, add whatever you want. So that's how you create a new document. Again, file, new, and then fill out everything you need to. And in the next story, what I'm going to do is, well, you know what? I'm not going to tell you guys because it's going to be awesome. Don't want to spoil it for you. But again, a lot of these things you don't even want to touch. You just want to choose default Photoshop size and OK. But if you want to go, you know, change one thing specific to how you want it, that's how you do it. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Google+. And, you know, if you want to send me like $1,000 in the mail, you can do that too. So uh, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you in the next video.